Guys of Reddit who have rejected someone, what's the worst way someone has taken it? I was in New York during Fleet Week in my dress whites with my group waiting to cross the street. A drunk girl comes up to me, grabs me, and says she's always wanted to be with a sailor. I gently stiff arm her and let her know I'm happily married, but point out my young single shipmate in the group. But I want you. Her friends had arrived by this point. She told them I was being mean because I said no and started crying. The friends confronted me. It's her birthday, though. Your wife isn't even here. Just be nice. Now, imagine being that entitled in life to think that you can just approach some random Navy sailor and expect them to bow to your wishes. I hope this rejection was a wake-up call to one, stop being a home-wrecking sl and two, have some self-respect. Apparently, she needs to find some better friends, too. Me and this Irish chick hooked up, and we had a few great nights of f***ing each other's brains out. Come the following week, we play it off at work like nothing ever happened. About two weeks after that, we are f***ing and sucking each other silly after work. I realized after a month that our 20-year difference in age is going to lead us nowhere together. I break this to her, and she walks to the site parking lot and burns my pickup truck to the ground. Like, not even the aluminum rims survived this. She was arrested for arson, and I laid no charges against her. I got a new truck thanks to insurance. Never f*** around with a redhead. They are psycho. True story about redheads. Those bitches be crazy. But on the other hand, even though this guy thinks he's being all noble about not pressing charges, consider what she is going to do to the next guy since she isn't being held accountable. Don't let the crazies off the hook that easily, man. Amber heard that. I once went on an internet double date. My friend had been internet dating this woman for a while and needed a driver to go meet her for the first time. To help convince me to drive, they arranged for one of her friends to come with her. When we got to the meetup spot a few cities over, the friend wasn't there, stuck at work. So I was forced to play the third wheel, watching my friend and his girlfriend profess their love and make out. Needless to say, when my friend finally showed up, I was overjoyed. She misinterpreted my thank God someone to talk to reaction for oh my God, love at first sight reaction. She got away intensely quickly, so I eventually let her down as easily as I could. For months afterwards, I got multiple emails and phone calls a day, with the craziest example being an email with our names, Together Forever, I Love You, piped out once for every day since we'd met. She also apparently went to my work once, but luckily I wasn't there at the time. I was on the verge of calling the cops after that stunt. Eventually, my complete lack of responses of her communication, and after blocking several of her email addresses, it tapered off. But I'd still get random phone calls and emails from her, even years after this all happened. Kudos to this guy for staying the course and staying disciplined enough to ignore this chick. At first, that can be very hard to straight up ignore a person, and often that makes the person persist even more. But let this be a lesson to all guys out there to stick your ground. I came home from work to find her naked, on my bed. About a week after we broke up, she went into complete denial about the breakup and for months after would tell people we are still dating and would show up at my house. A clingy girl that shows up unannounced at your house? Sounds like a great opportunity for a straining order to me. Unless this guy is casually leaving out what happened after he found her naked in his bed. Did you kick her out? Did you do the dirty? We need details, man. Dated a girl from work, and after a few dates, I didn't see it going much further, so I ended it. Girl pretty much spread around that we f at work, and we didn't. That single-handedly cost me any kind of promotion or horizontal move off of what I was doing, so I ended up changing jobs about 12 months later, after every application for promotion was given to someone else, despite myself having a lot more experience and know-how with what we did. Prior to that, I was being moved around from project to project after I just went back to permanent nights. Said girl went on to get pregnant about six months later by someone else from work. What do you think she was trying to accomplish here? She obviously has a lot to lose as well by spreading a rumor that she has sex at work. It's a shame that justice couldn't prevail where that guy loses nothing and clears his name and that girl gets fired for lying. Why, karma gods, why? A girl at work started playing some aggressive footsie at work. When I pushed her foot away and gave her a look, she went on to tell me I'm not as attractive as I think I am and that I should start dating girls in my own league. Lying to me that she had become pregnant and intended to keep the kid. We had always practiced safe sex, but condoms have a non-zero failure rate. And there's no good way to tell someone who says they're pregnant that they're wrong, so I took her at her word. 
After three weeks of her stalling on showing me any kind of proof beyond her word, she told me it wasn't going to be a problem, but I was beside myself with the stress until then. Meanwhile, I'm figuring out if I need to boy her up. I take responsibility for myself, so being a deadbeat wasn't an option, but child support was going to throw a huge wrench in my financial plans. I was in the middle of moving to a new city as well. All in all, it sucked. Near as I can tell, her goal was to inflict stress and pain. She succeeded. Now, in my opinion, lying about something this important should be illegal, or maybe it already is. Anyone aware of states where it's illegal to fake a pregnancy like this? She would obviously cross the line if she claimed that she needed financial support up front before the baby arrived. A dude asked me over to his house to study. He put on some adult film and asked me to jerk him off. I said no, and then he figured he'd asked if he could blow me. I rejected him and told my mom to come get me. He persisted the whole time. Then at school, every time he saw me, he very loudly called me gay to everyone around him. Now, I am not into dudes, and he was in the closet. Honestly, I just smiled and kept moving every time he eventually gave up. I think he came out two years later and was one of the four gay dudes in school in revolving relationships with each other. Self-esteem on this guy was obviously a low point. If you have to try to embarrass a straight guy to hide your own insecurities, Glad that he was finally able to come out, though. The other guy 100% deserves an apology for that type of behavior, too. Not me, but my best friend in school. She came on to him hard in public, and there were about a dozen people around. He was startled and turned her down, and she started screaming, stamping her feet and crying. Then she told all of her friends that she would commit suicide. They tried to guilt my friend with that, but he managed to shrug it off. The whole thing blew off in like three days. High school was weird. And now, I'm just going out on a limb here that that girl is obviously not getting the attention at home that she thinks she deserves. I think the toddler-like temper tantrum and fake stupid threat were the big giveaways. She cried and was wailing that it was because she was ugly and it's her weird nose while in public. I told her it wasn't, and it's me. I used to think I wasn't shallow, but her nose was Mount Everest and Uncanny Valley at the same time. She later said I slapped my D on her nose to get off. Edit. I did not have sexual relations with that nose. Now, pick a lane here, girl. Can't tell if she is ashamed of her nose or actually wanting this guy to be obsessed with it. A girl in high school out of the blue started describing what our house would be like once we got married and had kids. Told her that I really wasn't interested and she lost her goddamn mind. For like two weeks, she'd wait by the doors after school just to glare at me. Never said anything just glared. In high school, this girl would not stop texting me, so I blocked her. She then went on to tell her friends she was depressed and couldn't get over me even though I rarely spoke to her in person, only through her constant stream of messages. After that, she fainted almost once a day during class, but coincidentally only in the classes she shared with me, then would cry to her friends that I was the reason she was fainting. Of course, though, she never hurt herself during these faints, and always managed to land comfortably on the ground. She also used to storm out of the door in the middle of class and literally fall out the door. Now I wonder, if girls could look into the future 10 years from high school and see how people are probably remembering how crazy they are and how they acted, if they would act this immature. What is it about high school that makes certain people so obsessed with attention? It's like four years out of decades of your life, people. Pulled a knife on me, like a kitchen knife, in the middle of the school, I feared for my life. She swung at me a few times and gashed my cheek. Then she started slashing at herself before teachers apprehended her. She was screaming all the while as well. And people wonder why I don't like Doki Doki Literature Club. Met some friends at a bar event. Friends had a girl who was beyond shit hosed with them. Friends mentioned going back to their place and I decide to buy a burrito and go home. Girl says I should come with, but I respectively decline. She demands that I come with, and I decline again. Well, at least give me a goodnight kiss if you're not going to come with me. I pass because I don't know her, I'm not remotely into her, and I don't want to know her. This girl goes batshit. She's shrieking obscenities at me, trying to slap me from the railing she's against, just losing her mind. My friends are trying to calm her down, and I just peeked out through the kitchen of the place because I work there. Yeah, so this girl obviously saw that going much differently in her drunken head. Did she think that one kiss would lead this guy to be all in on going back and getting busy? I bet she had bad teeth, too. I broke up with this girl, and she didn't want to. She tried to talk me out of it, and then tried to 
me by pinning my hands with my knees and trying to take my pants off. Being bigger and stronger, I just stood up and dumped her on the floor. I never thought about r the same again after that. One time later, her other ex, who was my best friend, was visiting and she came over. Things seemed to be going pretty okay when all of a sudden she leapt up in the air and tried to come down on my chest with her knees like some kind of wrestling move. I was so mad, I literally threw her out of my front door and told her to get the f*** out of my life. Turns out she was jealous of our friendship. I don't think I ever saw her again, and for the record, the sex was good. You know what they say. Crazy chicks can be great in bed, but remember guys, the hot crazy matrix is a real thing, and it's a sliding scale. Hot and good sex might seem like the best idea ever at the time, but there comes a point where you just can't deal with the crazy anymore. Kudos to this guy for thinking with the head on his shoulders and not the one in his pants.